Hey everybody, Dark Horse here with an overview of the brand new Smash Remix Patch 1.0. They did it, they made it to 1.0, and uh, let's see what we got. First of all, one of the biggest parts of this patch has to be the addition of new character Mewtwo. Mewtwo is another DJC character added to the roster. Um, kind of similar to Yoshi and Ness and Lucas in that aspect. You notice that a lot of his moves and animations are similar to those found in Super Smash Bros. Melee, uh, but there are some custom ones here as well. And even some of the ones that are similar um, have been changed a little bit here and there. At first glance, Mewtwo is a pretty fun character to play. His tail attacks are a little ridiculous, uh, very strong. His, um, his movement is pretty fun to play around with. I'm not very good at it yet. Uh, his up B is his teleport. Um, seems like a great escape option, but it is frame five. So it's not the fastest option out there. It's not super fast like a, like a Pikachu up B or something like that, but quite good. Um, gotta be quick though to uh, get the right angle you want because there's not a whole lot of time to adjust the joystick. Special attacks are the teleport. Um, the Shadow Ball, which the uh, the graphic is from um, from the movie, which is a pretty cool reference there. And Disable. Um, disable puts your opponent to sleep if they are facing you, um, and standing. If they're in the air, it just does knockback, and if they're not facing you, it just does knockback. Uh, if you put them to sleep, though, and you hit them with another one, um, it doesn't just keep putting them to sleep, it, uh, it actually just does some damage and knockback. Mewtwo seems like he has a lot of fun combos and pressure options uh, if you utilize the, the double jumps very well. Um, again, attacks like up tilt and up air with his tail are very strong and uh, I see those uh, being used quite a bit. And we got another patch that adds two new characters and the second character this patch is Marth. Uh, Marth has been a very popular request from the beginning, along with Mewtwo, to be fair. He looks like he plays very similarly to the way he does in Super Smash Bros. Melee. His aerials, his ground attacks, his specials are um, all very, very similar, but made to fit within this game. Um, very important aspect uh, of these characters. They're not just like porting animations and moves over and the hitboxes and the angles and all that they are making a lot of adjustments to make sure that they feel natural in this game and marth feels like he belongs in this game um, i think he's going to be a very strong character um great combos a uh, lot of good range with the sword attacks um, aerials all come out fast they can chain into each other very well. Specials are pretty fun. Uh, the neutral special with the different options, you can, with the second and third hits, you can go up or down, and it has different effects, like the up hits will just pop characters up, makes sense. And the down hits, actually, the second down hit has a spike to it. It's not, it's nothing crazy, but it, it, it's there. And uh, the third down hit is the multi, the multi hit. Get some good shield pokes with it. Does decent knockback. It's a good move. Up special, of course, the dolphin slash, with a whole bunch of different angles. And uh, the down special. This is this is cool. This is a a totally new mechanic added to this game. It's a count. It's the counter. It doesn't have the the crazy scaling that Marth counters seem to have now. It has a little bit of scaling, but it's not going to be anything crazy. Uh, really cool move. Comes out on frame six, so it's not going to be you're not going to be abusing that to get out of combos because frame six. I mean, it's just not it's not the fastest thing ever, uh, but still good and uh, really cool. I'm, I'm I'm interested to see how people use that in their in their gameplay. But yeah, Marth uh, looks like a really good character. Combos are, are, are really good, especially out of things like forward throw and up tilt. Just sets up a lot of combos with up air and forward air into the down air, like uh, like you would see in, in Melee. Now we're just gonna go down the patch notes and um, talk about all the, the new features and new additions and changes in uh, patch 1.0. 
First thing here on the patch notes is that rumble effects have been added or modified for all remix character movesets and to the mushroom item. So that's pretty cool. If you play with a rumble pack, um, you now get rumble effects with remix characters. Uh, that's just, that's really cool. Next, we have some adjustments to Ganondorf. Looks like there was an issue where his cape was sometimes invisible. That's now fixed. We got the new announcer voice and some of his purple explosion graphics have been fixed. Some changes to Wario. Fix the pug where his turn animation was longer than intended. Interesting. Back throw. Back throw sends at a higher angle now. Has increased knockback growth, but decreased base knockback. These changes just make it so it's not quite as strong at low percents, but it still takes stocks out of the blast zone around the same percent or slightly earlier. So looks like slight overall buff to back throw. Wario's dash attack got the, uh, the much needed nerf. The distance traveled is decreased and the active frames decreased from 24 to 15. Uh, it was a little ridiculous. Um, it went super far and was active for a long time and it was strong. It was just, it was kind of a crazy move. So this is, uh, this is good. I don't think the nerf makes it a bad move. Um, it just makes it reasonable. Up tilt, startup decreased from nine to seven frames. So it comes out faster. Active frames decreased from 20 to 14. So it's not out as long. And the total duration of the animation is decreased by two frames. Hitbox size and placement adjusted. So look at the overall buff for up tilt comes out a little faster. Hitbox is a little better. Animation doesn't last as long. It's not active as long, but I think making the move come out faster kind of just makes this a better move. Down tilt, hitbox move forward to match hand position. Okay, so a little bit more range out of the down tilt. Not allowed to reverse hit, all right? Next, we have Oreo's back air startup decreased by two frames. Nice, 12 to 10, so it comes out faster. 12 is, uh, you know, pretty slow for an aerial, so getting that, getting that speed is nice. Um, strong hitbox size decreased. Oh, okay, so not gonna be easy, as easy to hit the strong attack, but it does come out faster, but probably overall buff for this move. Down aerial startup decreased by one frame. All right, so another move that's now faster. Um, seven to six, total duration reduced by one frame to match, okay. Movement and hitbox placement adjusted so that Wario hits further below. So more disjoint, nice, okay. This is something that Wario has been lacking on a lot of his moves, um, some disjoint on the hitboxes. So good to see that. And now the move that everybody loves, right? Wario's neutral special, a lot of changes here. Active frames decreased by a lot, by 14, 40 to 26 frames. So it's not active nearly as long. Strong hit and parry duration decreased by four frames. Okay, makes sense. Distance traveled shortened to match active frame. Okay, so it it just doesn't go nearly as far. Total duration decreased 84 to 79. Base speed increased. Okay, so it doesn't go as far, but you move faster. So that's, that's a pretty cool compromise. Uh, recoil total duration increased. Okay, so recoil is longer. No longer cancels when colliding with the ground and distance reduced slightly. So these three things make the move not as safe on shield. Uh, before it was totally safe on shield. You could just neutral B and then fade back and you were fine. Uh, doesn't look like that's gonna be the case anymore. So overall nerf to the move, it was ridiculous, but the speed increase is nice. So it's not all bad for Wario's neutral special. Uh, they did fix the bug where Wario could bounce off of a wall when landing on the corner of a stage. I only got that to work on one or two stages, but I know it was a thing. So it's cool that they were able to figure that out. And apparently his mustache was sometimes invisible and that is now fixed. So that's it for Wario. Next, we'll move on to Falco. A uh, bug fix with the base knockback of up there. I did not know about that. New announcer voice. Okay, cool. Did Wario get a new announcer voice? Did he already have one? All right. And uh, for Falco, less chance to SD and remix one player mode. There's going to be a lot of those changes with the remix characters because they were not happy with how easy it was to kind of cheese the, uh, the CPUs in remix one player. You could almost always get them to just neutral or up special off the stage in SD. 
and um, yeah, it made it made it kind of silly. So nice change. I think the less chance to SD in Remix 1P really just means that he doesn't do um, grounded up special. So that's uh, that's big. All right, now Bowser. Bowser got a new announcer voice effect also. Um, less chance to SD in Remix 1P, so he's not using grounded up special in Remix 1P because that was like just free anytime you fought Bowser. Up special. Here we go. This is what people wanted. Slightly decreased maximum height. So he doesn't go as high with his up special. So harder to recover. Um, not just the insane, insane recovery that he's had. And then forward air. Decreased range, especially below. Hitbox ends one frame earlier. So the move, it ends one frame earlier, which isn't like a crazy nerf or anything like that. But the decreased range, especially the lower hitboxes, is pretty huge. That move was oppressive. Um, it covered so much ground and it just reached places that you didn't really expect it to reach. So this was a nerf I think we all saw coming and it feels appropriate. Um, up air, removed head intangibility on second hit. He did have intangibility on his head on both hits, um, but I guess yeah, they decided to get rid of it on the second hit, which is where the fire comes out. Up smash, intangibility length changed from three to two, so he lost the frame of intangibility on his up smash, okay. His quick and slow ledge attacks um, had their their active frames cut down. Um, they were kind of long, so it makes sense. Uh, the hitbox ends six frames earlier for the quick ledge attack and the slow ledge attack. Actually, I misspoke. The slow ledge attack hitbox begins two frames later. So it wasn't about reducing the overall active frames. It was about making it start later. Not a lot for Lucas here. He just got the new announcer voice effect, and that's it. Next, we got some Japanese chants were fixed. I think they uh, they weren't chanting at the proper speed. So uh, now Japanese Fox, Link, and Samus got their uh, chants fixed. Mad Piano, less chance to SD in Remix 1 player mode. Again, the ups, grounded up special. This is huge. Um, Mad Piano, that's a, that's a harder fight. So not being able to cheese it with that, uh, that's going to change a lot of runs. Fox. Less chance to SD and Remix 1P, again with the grounded up special. Conquer, forward smash, not back growth, increase. So the frying pan actually got a buff. It, the knockback growth just didn't seem appropriate. It wasn't taking stocks where you would expect it to. Now, now it will, stronger overall. Dr. Mario, new announcer voice effect. No other changes. Kirby, improved Dark Samus hat model. All right. I think there was a like a graphical bug with that, so that's now fixed. Now we'll get into some of the general changes uh, in this patch. The widescreen feature got improved. They um, just fixed the resolution. Uh, we got some instruments fixed. I don't even know what that is. NES 25P Wave instrument fixed. All right, nice. Here's a big one. This is uh, something people have wanted for years and years and years. Original character costumes added. All original characters now have additional costumes. Hell yes. Um, every original character got, looks like two new costumes. Really cool. I want to say they're all based on some kind of actual in-game source material, but I don't want you to quote me on that. Regional variants now use the original character's 1P victory image instead of the remix image. All right. Added darkness and stun effects. Uh, darkness effects are for Ganon and Mewtwo and stun effect is for Mewtwo. Cool. Fixed token pickup bug on 1P bonus. Character select screen. All right. Stage alternates. Updated functionality and remix alternate added. So now you have the original stage, right? There are Dreamland variants to some stages. There are Omega variants to some stages. And now, now there are remix variants to some stages. Uh, examples of this are Final Destination with the tent, Final Tentination, Cool Cool Mountain got a remix version, and Dreamland got a remix version. Also, Game Boy Land got added as a stage and the remix version was made, uh, was what Muda Kingdom turned into. 
So pretty cool. A uh, lot of opportunity now for new stages and alternates. In the remix options, the uh, profile system now is a thing. You can have separate random music profiles and random stage profiles. Uh, really cool. A lot of different stage and music profiles now. Like if you want to just have all the different Dreamland versions of stages and play on those, you can set that profile now and just hit random every time you pick a stage and it'll pick one of those. Same with the other the other profiles. It, it affects the random aspect. So if you select the music profile, it only really works if you have random music on. Same with the stages. If you select a random stage profile, it only applies if you are selecting random stages. Really cool though. Um, this definitely enhances the overall playing experience. Um, and it just lets people play the way they want even more. Another thing that got added is a net play profile. This affects all settings, not just random music or random stages. It's just a profile that, uh, Makes things a little bit simpler for playing people online. It changes some of the settings, like, you know, hold the pause and skip results screen and, and that kind of stuff. Really cool. Looks like also the random stages for tournament profile has been updated. Um, we got some new stages. Some things got added, some things got cut. Um, also the tournament stage layout got revised. So when you select the tournament profile and you go to the stage select screen, now they are in a different order. They have a lot of stages that have been used in tournament on the front page and on the next page it looks like a lot of the original stages are there. Yeah, you don't play original stages like Peach's Castle in tournament anymore, but the Dreamland variants are still legit. So the first two pages really have all the stages that people have used for tournaments or might use for tournaments. A new toggle got added that prevents exiting from training mode unless the A button is held down. So for everyone that would accidentally exit instead of hitting reset, um, you can actually put that toggle on in the remix settings and now uh, this won't happen to you anymore on those long, you know, combo training mode grinds. This is such a cool new feature. Um, it's one of the things that like nobody's asking for it. Nobody knew they wanted it, but now that we have it, we love it. Music titles in Game of Origin now appear at match start. So cool. So when you are uh, when you load up a match and you're like, man, what is that song? You don't have to ask anymore. It pops up in front of you. It's so nice. We got some updates to the uh, character select screen panel menu. <laughs> Made it easier to click on things, so that's really nice. Added a reset button. So when you change a whole bunch of things and you don't remember what you changed and you don't know how to fix it, you can just hit reset and it'll go to default. We got custom shield colors. This is sick. There are 15 different colors you can pick from, which in there are 15 different colors you can pick from, which do include the originals, but you now have a choice. 15 different shield colors. A stock mode was added on this menu. There are three options, last, manual, and default. Last maintains the stock count at the end of the game. So if you're playing a four stock match, and someone wins and has two stocks remaining, they will start the next match with two stocks remaining. Uh, this is really nice for, you know, if you wanted to do a custom character battle that involved more than 12 characters, if you wanted to do a crew battle, um, this is a, a cool option. The, the manual option allows for stock counts to be set before the match starts. So if you want to play you know, one stock versus someone four stock, someone's four stocks, you don't have to like run off the side of the stage three times at the beginning of the match. You can actually just set this instead. Um, this also works in tw the 12 character battle mode if you want to have certain characters with custom stock counts. The model display selectable. All right, so you can uh, pick what model display you want. Menu items can now apply to human CPUs only or both. This is a cool one. So. You can also now add custom input delay. So if you're really used to playing online and you want that feel on console, or you want to practice for online without actually going online, you can put custom delay on up to 12 frames. Um, that's for humans only for CPUs. This uh, input delay changes to handicap. A lot of cool stuff here in the character select screen panel menu. 
Salty Runback now keeps stock counts when stock mode is set to last. So if you quit out in Salty Runback on your la as you're about to lose your last stock, you will stay on that stock count um, when the next match starts. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting. CPU costumes and shades are now controllable when hovering over them. So you can actually choose what costume the CPUs have now. Pretty cool. It's like they updated the font for some of their text. Remix setting, page updates. You can now scroll with scroll left with the Z button. Nice. You can preview music tracks with the A button. That's really nice. Um, you can now toggle all random stage and music toggles on and off with the A button. Nice. Help text added when a menu option has A button functionality. All right, I like help text. Fixed bug with result screen transitions that resulted in a horizontally squashed image. All right. D-pad movement has returned to stage select screen control. A lot of people missed that. I thought that was kind of weird, but I guess if you're not using an original controller, maybe you might use the D-pad to scroll stage select. I don't know. Model display now forces low poly on pause when in low poly mode. Now that we're through all the general changes this patch, let's check out the modes. All-star mode has been added. This is freaking awesome. Those of you that enjoyed all-star mode back in Melee, and I don't even know if they had it in later games, basically the same thing. You got three hearts, and you got to get through all the characters. Um, you'll start out playing 1v1s, and then 2v1s, and then 3v1s. And then the final is a team battle against whoever is remaining. I just, it, I, I can't believe they were able to add this to the game. Um, just a whole new, just a whole new game mode for us to play. It's awesome. Let's see. They also fixed Remix 1P low poly team pose glitch. Okay. Revised 1P ending image. Yep. You got to update that. Custom items now spawn in Remix 1 player mode. Pretty cool. Multi-man and cruel multi-man announcements added. We got some changes to training mode. Custom menu updated with an L button toggle for displaying current action and frame. I love this. I'm so happy this got added. Um, it makes, you know, figuring out all the frame data so much easier. Uh, I'm, I'm super happy about this. Custom menu scrolling functions better when speed is changed. I didn't know that was an issue. Custom menu now has correct costume count per character. Got some changes to the 12 character battle mode. Custom character sets are now possible through D-pad functionality. D-pad up cycles through character set presets. So when you're on custom, you can go D-pad up and it'll cycle through presets. Um, D-pad down creates a random character set and that's all characters. It could be Giga Bowser, could be Polly Samus, could be Japanese Ness, everything. D-pad indicators added when hovering over portraits for clarity. All right, so in 12 character battle mode, the stock mode default and last are basically, they behave the same, but in manual mode, you can change the stock count for specific characters. So you might be doing a four stock 12 character battle, but if you want Giga Bowser to have one stock, you can set that. We got a lot of uh, stage changes this patch. Stage select logos added back in. Nice. We've got some new stages. Jungle Japes got added. Castle Siege got added. Game Boy Land got added. This is this is probably the coolest stage on the entire hack now. It's just so well done and there's so much going on. It's a really cool stage. Uh, Yoshi's Island 2 was added. Final Destination and Duel Zone got Dreamland variants added. So that's nice. Final Destination got Tent Final Destination added as the remix variant. Cool Cool Mountain got a Dreamland variant with the slippery platforms. Cool Cool Mountain also got a remix variant added. Mewtwo and Marth got their Board the Platforms and Break the Target stages added. So totally custom bonus stages for Mewtwo and Marth. So definitely go check those out. Uh, Muda Kingdom got completely redone and um, is now the remix version of Game Boy Land. The Corneria stage got some updates with the Great Fox's lasers. Graphics and functionality have changed a little bit. 
I like it. I like it now. Delfino Island. This stage got totally overhauled. There are now a whole bunch of different platform layouts that fly in and out at different time intervals. So really fun stage to play on. Uh, definitely check it out. A lot of different possibilities with the different platforms. Datadyne got the uh, the issue with the Cradle music track fixed. Um, it would like hang on a note sometimes. It was pretty funny. Congo Falls got the DK rap track updated. Kitchen Island got music updated. Venom got 1P mode camera fixed. Corneria City got some remix 1P spawn points fixed. They were like spawning like slightly above platforms, I think. It just looked funny. Yoshi's Story got updated music. Um, the updated Yoshi Golf track. Yoshi Tail is now the main track. And the athletic track from um, Super Mario World 2 is now an alternate. Bowser Stadium got the 1P mode spawns changed. Goomba Road got a graphical update. 1-1 One -one got a track update. WarioWare got a track update. Fountain of Dreams got the uh, Versus Marks added as an alternate track. Norfair got a model update. Tower of Heaven got a model update. Smashville got a model update. Mad Monster Mansion got a model update. Kalos model update. Pokemon Stadium model update. Skyloft model update. Hyrule Temple model update. And Yoshi's Story model update. Lastly, Wario Land, Astral Observatory, and the DK Wrap all got updated. So that was a complete overview of the new Smash Remix Patch 1.0. So many new things to check out between two new characters, All-Star Mode, new stages, new character select screen options. There's just a ton going on. Um, definitely messed around with the stage and music profiles. Uh, both of them actually have a, a staff picks one, so some of the favorites of the remix devs, the stages and music tracks. So go check all of that out. Go play Smash Remix. Have fun. I'll see you next time. Peace out.